March 2020? God, fucking feels like it, huh? <laughs> I got it again, a big beat burger! Hell yeah! Woo! Familiar sounds, familiar smells, familiar faces. Yet again, I'm recalling that night when everything finally seemed to change for the better. I mean, it's not like I wasn't expecting everything to go back to the old, depressing normal. Even in the thick of it, the rational part of me recognized my state as temporary. But with these highs, there's always a hope it won't end. Or maybe that an ego death will finally occur. Be satisfied, you stupid fucking bitch, I command you. Also me and myself. Also, there goes my monetization. Here's all the logical evidence for why you should be satisfied. Here's the obvious direction for your life. And here's a detailed explanation for how you should treat the people that care for you. No dice. I always fall back into the same old habits. It's like they were encoded deep in my DNA. The aimlessness, the powerlessness, spiritual exhaustion, these goddamn fast food trips, stupid fucking self-loathing, now amplified whenever I drink somebody's blood. <sighs> Maybe I should just blame it all on the misfortune of my birth. You do this social climbing until you dissociate, then you're just this untethered, constantly frustrated ball of dumb desires. Except I'm sort of immortal right now, and I need to figure out what to do next. <laughs> I watched this obscure Asian movie once. Eli, Eli, Lema Sabachthani, starring Tadanobu Asano, one of the coolest guys in the world, plays this mer- MERSBOW! That's a reference I get! Fuck yeah, Mersbow! Uh, I mean, heck yeah, Mersbow! I don't know, is it a minute yet? He plays this mersbow like figure, a legendary noise musician. There's this mysterious virus spreading around the world, causing despair and mass suicides. A rich CEO's granddaughter gets sick and longs to die, so he spends a fortune searching for the cure. Turns out Asano and his friend, played by this violent onsen geisha guy, are traveling through Japan, searching the corpse-strewn towns and the fields for any unique items that can produce beautiful sounds. Turns out the beautiful sounds were the friends we made along the way. As it turns out, the avant-garde walls of noise they create are able to heal the infected. The CEO begs the band to help, offering them all the money they want. But for some reason, they refuse. Through a series of flashbacks, concerts, and vignettes, a mystery unfolds. Eventually, we realize that Asano's music is not just a remedy, it's also a cause of the virus. Whenever it connects with people, they get this hunger for more extreme, more novel experiences. And eventually, they hit a wall. Nothing can satisfy them anymore. They lose their will to live. Not even the musicians are spared from this curse. They know the end will come sooner or later. The girl is saved by a mind-blowing concert, but the tragedy is merely postponed, not averted. The last shot of a Jesus like Asano silently considering his role as savior and destroyer stayed with me. The form of the film is abrasive. Little to no narrative coherence, some weird cartoonish creative choices, the Japanese noise soundtrack. Actually, it's Japanese. I think there's actually a genre called Japanese of Japanese noise music. Yeah, there it is, Japanese. Fuck yeah. I know my noise music. Bitch, I'll kill you. The very free form and hard to understand weave of themes. I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. I love you, Julia. So, let's see. She's goth. She's a vampire. She wear she wore a suit. Uh, and she likes noise music. I love women. I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> but at this point, movies like this are all that truly connect with me. Hmm. I'm the New York representative of the Sombra Clan now, also known as the Night Clan. They're masters of shadows, 
who cast distorted reflections and make modern tech go haywire in their presence. Last year, a few months before I was embraced, the Sombra had joined with the Camarilla, the biggest and most traditional sect in the vampire world. The two groups actually used to fight each other, but our leaders found some intel that made them reconsider their strategy. So they sent a diplomatic mission to parley with their historical enemies. The deal they got in Chicago was simple, an unlife or an unlife. For every the Sombra Vampire allowed in the Ivory Tower, one other the Sombra Vampire has to meet their ultimate end. I still remember the name of the woman who met her final death, so I could begin the Mayan life. Her name was Hester Reed, sworn enemy of the Camarilla, a guerrilla fighter who spent decades opposing them. She was someone with far better principles than mine from what I've gathered. Well, wherever she was, she was executed by my sire. Her execution by my sire served to convince the NYC elites to give us the Sombra a chance. Then they set out to look for a mutually agreed upon candidate who'd become the clan's rep in the city. My sire searched for someone who gave the impression she was more than she appeared. The local court was looking for someone they could walk all over. Ooh, court, I'm assuming court is just like primogen, but I want to check. Kindred hierarchy of rule, yeah, okay. So, I thought it was like, a term I don't recognize? No. After long negotiations, they decided I was a good compromise. They proceeded to systemically destroy my entire life, just to make me show I was psychologically strong enough to join their ranks. The turncoat special, they called it. Somehow, I succeeded. And it eventually led me right back to where I started. <sighs> I stopped writing and put my pen down. Valerie! Hell yeah! She's, uh, one of the sheriff's hounds. Will that be all? Yes, Mr. Vall. I hope you enjoy your stay in London. Oh, I very much doubt I will. Just like every other cultured person. I think the only good Englishman is a dead Englishman. Fuck yeah! Hell yeah, Valerie! Uh, what do we say? Fucked up serial killer privilege. She looks privileged as fuck. She has had a chromia! I didn't notice that in the first game. Privileged scum. Must be nice. Traveling the world and all that. Eh. Caracas, Mogadishu, Shanghai. The blood tastes the same in anywhere you go. The biggest difference is that your duties become more of a hassle. Mr. Vall, every other word you uttered utter tonight just made you more punchable. Ah, <laughs> uh, that'll be all. Tell Kitty I said hello and farewell. Safe travels. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, psycho. Oh, well. I'm the lone, the somber in this town, and my representational role means jack shit. No titles, no perks, no whatever. Right now, I'm the court's gopher. Doing all sorts of work nobody else will touch. My main duties? Being a sort of immigration officer. See, New York City is probably the biggest vampire travel hub in the U.S. And definitely the biggest one on the East Coast. Almost every vampire- Almost every kindred arriving from Africa and Europe comes through here. I don't know why I interrupted myself. I could have just said vampire, but... The local Camarilla is nuts about bureaucracy and population control. So every vampire leaving or arriving in this town is supposed to check with me to inform me about their travels. Well, in theory, at least. The VIPs play through different rules. They take care of their stuff through connections and servants. But for the smaller fish, I'm like a vampire Statue of Liberty. The first bloodsucker every kindred come to NYC should see. On paper, anyway. The first after the Prince, or Kadir, the Primogen Council. These things vary. Yeah, I'm a naturally traitorous La Sombra, th so they still prefer being traditional and hands-on about these things. As I said, at the end of the day, I'm just a gopher. And this work only serves me serves to remind me I'm not quite in, just standing at the gate. They haven't even given me an office. I just meet everyone in public places, such as coffee shops or this fast food restaurant. Some consider this an insult and lash out at me. But most of them understand we're in the same boat. Only here because we're curs who need to be reminded of our place from time to time. 
Speaking of, my last client is 15 minutes late, and I still have more errands to run tonight. This is getting irritating. To be honest, I should just find some self-respect and leave. But I won't. My sorry upbringing left me with this stupid sense of responsibility. Ten more minutes pass. Eventually, an unfamiliar woman appears by the door. She tells someone to stand by the door and walks in. <gasps> oh, I know who she is! I saw her on the Steam Store page! I won't say who, but... ah! Long chestnut hair. Body stuck in her late teens by the look of it. Fashionable scarf covering most of her face. <laughs> oh, I really hope the fact that they bring up she's covering her face in 2020. I really hope they do. Elegant clothes. Dignified walk. I signal her to sit in front of me, trying my best not to let my impatience show. She obliges. You're here to check in? I am. Julia Sowinski, I presume. She's scanning her surroundings like we're at a circus. I hope you won't mind if I make it quick. I'm needed in Elysium. Name? Catherine Weiss. Yes! Ah! <laughs> Woo! I won't spoil who Catherine Weiss is, but she's a character in the lore and I love her. Ha. Huh. I swear I've heard that name before. Someone else's description of her crosses my mind. That weird lady who owns the art hole, but's never there? Weird? So it is her. Catherine Weiss, the owner of the art hall, de facto headquarters of the New York City Camarilla. For fuck's sake, Julia. What are you doing calling your weird right off the bat? God knows you've already made a fool of yourself in front of enough VIPs in this city. Recover. I'm sorry, it's just that I still don't know many people, so I have to go by the descriptions I'm given by members of the Primogen. Well, a description is mostly correct. Outside of that one word that slightly perplexes me. Paul calling the kettle black, sounds like. Oh, uh, from what I gathered, it's just that your interests are rumored to be, uh, not fully aligned with the Camarillas, and it irks some folks up there. Being a keeper of Elysium is not much for some, I see. I suspect that as much. But what can you do? She seems chill. Good. Anyway, uh... Catherine Weiss. Wow. Yes. One way to spell it, people often have trouble getting it right. Forgive my indiscretion, it's just that people of your stature don't usually bother checking in with me. They usually report their arrival to one of the Primogen, and they make all the arrangements. I heard Prince Panhard is busy with the preparations for her big party. I assume that if I spared her some paperwork, she'd appreciate it as a gesture of goodwill. Besides, I want to meet the infamous La Sombra representative out of sheer curiosity. My interest peaked once I had heard about her. She looks around knowingly. Unique circumstances. Yes, uh, Prince Helena Panhard had trouble justifying the exorbitant rent my property would need. That's literally pennies for her. And as far as I know, she's been sitting on an empty property since last year. Looks like they've got it out for you. Bad. That's what I assumed, but it's nice to get confirmation. Well, it's not like my clan has ever been particularly popular in these parts. At least that's what I've heard. Sins of the fathers and so on. I mean, in these parts, New York used to be a Sabbat city, so... Yes. Just to make sure, you've never met to Hester, but... You know of her? I do know I wouldn't be here if not for her. You two met? No. I only heard of her once or twice. We had similar outlooks on many issues, although we tended to come up with completely different solutions. In any case, I think it's meaningful that Hester died so that you could live. They feared her. Now they fear you. And that is why they're keeping you down. If anyone who's not a VIP said this to me, I'd laugh in their face. Oh, I get what she's doing. She's trying to buy my favors. She's Catherine Weiss! She's, even not knowing her context in the lore, she's the Keeper of Elysium! Why does she need favors from you? Best not to act like I'm easy to please. Stick to business. Time will tell. 
In the meantime, I'll need you to help me out with my documentation. Of course. So, uh, where are you coming from? Washington, D.C.? She says it the way people in the Hollywood movies say it. The way that suggests her Washington is different from the Washington you and I would see. What were you doing there? Take a guess. Government work? Write that down. It ought to amuse Helena a little bit. If you say so. Date and hour of arrival? She takes out a plane ticket and slides it towards me. It's all here. 1 a.m. Got it. Method of transit, plane, purpose of visit? Meeting with Prince ought to work just fine. I guess. Estimated duration of visit? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I have my pencil in hand. The game is doing the writing sound effects. I just. Immersion! Undefined. Write six months if you really need to. Place of accommodation? Conditions of intended stay? The auto? Conditions should be adequate. You tell me. I tend to be happy with Airbnb. Home sweet home? I'm not certain that I ever felt particularly at home here. That makes two of us. Curious. Do you have nothing holding you here? The face of a blonde-haired friend appears in my mind's eye, then vanishes. There's nothing holding me anywhere. I see. Gay, 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 gay. A prolonged silence. She stares into my eyes, and I return the stare. It's, she's studying me. It's unnerving, but I do my best not to turn away. Eventually, she smiles. Trust me, I can just tell. Didn't you say you were short on time? Oh god, yes, Kadir will kill me. I quickly begin to collect my stuff from underneath the table. You can simply inform him I paid you a visit. He'll understand. And he'll pass it on to everyone who should be in the know. Sure thing. Good. We will see each other soon, I hope. At party tomorrow night? I, uh, wasn't invited. She gives me a pitying look. I understand. Well, if not given the opportunity, we should make our own. I'll be in touch. Good night, Miss Weiss. Wish you a pleasant stay. Good night. And don't rush these things. You've got your whole unlife ahead of you. And you're in a position where you can take it easy. Take your time. Get a different perspective. I nod and walk slowly out the door. When I lose sight of the restaurant, I sprint toward the subway. Slow night? I wish. You're late. Kitty! Oh, he's in a new suit! Look at him! Look at, my, look at this handsome devil! Ah, I love him! I wish. You're late again, by the way. I hope you have a good excuse. I'm trying to remember all the voices I did. I, I definitely remember Kadir's voice. Kadir al Azmai, the mighty sheriff of New York, is not happy to me. No wonder. I met him in Elysium 30 minutes later than the time we had agreed on. Yeah, well, Catherine fucking Weiss decided to arrive fashionably late. A likely story. She's supposed to be out of the city. If you think I'm pulling your leg, feel free to check my report. I pass him all of the official papers, the way I do every other night. Kadir stares me down for a good few seconds, then his steely gaze softens. Talking about ste steely gaze. <laughs> You're serious. Wise and McDonald's? With the mask and the elegant clothes, surrounded by the smell of french fries and hamburger patties? Must have been a hell of a sight. Technically, it was Triple B, not McDonald's. But, yeah. Oh, God, I mean, to fool myself. First thing I did, quoted somebody calling her a weirdo. Wanted to die on the spot. Lesbians? Served you right, you walking faux pas. I've been trying to teach you to control your tongue, but you never learn. It's a new gaff every week with you. Still, there's good news and bad news. The good news is, Catherine has a fondness for vampires of humble beginnings. Probably why she decided to see you in your, shall we say, natural habitat. She's one of those rich art scene assholes who seeks out working class cred. I did say something about watching your tongue. The bad news is, she's very astute. 
so she could recognize a moron like you right away. You never stood a chance at impressing her. Oh, shut up. You still need me for anything here? I'll get on it straight away. I wouldn't be standing out here chatting with you if I hadn't taken care of my duties. Thirty minutes is all it took to finish preparations for the big party. I'm about to see everyone off. Sorry. Couldn't be helped, I suppose. And it's more your loss than mine. I just wanted some company tonight. You could really use the chance to appear here on official duties, so everyone can get to know your face. Evan knows your fast food job isn't going to get you anywhere. You need to... what do they call it? Hustle? You don't need to tell me that. But it's not like being paraded around for a bunch of blue-blooded douchebags. It's... He somehow manages to give me a painful nudge in the back without so much as a hint of visible movement. Language, you fool. They're coming out. Just stand here in silence for five minutes. And focus on not embarrassing yourself any further, will you? Got it. The first two silhouettes appear in the doorway of the art hall. An old man in a wheelchair, pushed forward by his young servant. I haven't seen either of them before. <coughs> Mr. Payne, the night is still young. Hope you find the rest of it pleasant. Payne, the wheelchair. I've heard about him. Addison Payne, one of the cam the American Camarilla's main connections to the government in Wall Street. Disabled in quite a few ways. Needs a servant to communicate. Well! Don't I feel like the asshole for making that joke now. I only made that noise because he looks old. I'm sorry. I'm not ableist. I'd be full of resentment if I was embraced in this condition. But apparently, Payne is nothing but grateful for his immortality. He keeps writing fervent defenses of the traditions and Camarilla customs. Hope you're enjoying your stay in New York City. <laughs> he wordlessly shakes Kadir's hand, but doesn't even deign to acknowledge me. At least his servant gives me a small bow. I return it, and they leave. Kadir turns to the next person leaving. I, Regent? Can't wait to see you in your outfit. Spare me, Sheriff. Oh, God, I never met Ashling in the last game. Uh, spare me, Sheriff. This fancy dress party has caused me enough suffering without your help. I can only hope you haven't conspired with Helene to embarrass me with this gift. She points to a shrink-wrapped set of clothes she's carrying inside her coat. Kadir smirks briefly. She's Irish, cause fuck you! I didn't have to. As you well know, Prince Panhard displays a considerable foresight in the manner of party planning. Yes, if there's one thing she's deathly serious about, it's frivolities. A recognizable mortal quality, especially for a prince. We ought to celebrate it, not oppose it. Don't worry, Sheriff. I'm a big girl who knows her etiquette. I'll play your game, amuse the crowd a little bit, but I return to my study as fast as possible. Ashton Sturbridge, High Regent of the Chantry of the Five Burrows, a hero of the Battle of New York, biggest warlock in town. Could be a prince herself if she didn't have her eyes on a bigger prize. Also, the only reason I know that's pronounced Ashling is because I wanted to name one of my own characters that. Otherwise, I'd be calling her Eisling. Thing is, nobody knows what that prize is. They only know it has something to do with the goal of her thaumaturgical research. Whoever tried to find out what it is failed. Violently. Oh, I'm sure you're going to have fun. Miss Sawinski here has just informed me that Catherine Weiss is back in town. It's safe to assume she'll join our festivities. You're kidding me. Her negative reaction intrigues me, so I decide to give her another nudge. She told me to send her regards, and that she can't wait to catch up. Cheeky. That hint of torment on her face is less than I was counting on. But it'll do. Weiss. Excellent. Love to catch up with her. The barely concealed venom in her voice clearly suggests that, in fact, she'd hate to catch up with her. Brilliant deduction, Julia. Yes. Looks like tomorrow night will be very special. But for now, I bid you adieu. And she's gone. There's some kind of story between Ashling and Weiss I should be aware of. 
That part about sending regards it was a bold-faced lie, wasn't it? An innocent one. Overselling someone's courtesies is just good etiquette. You're unbelievable. Well, I doubt High Regent Sturbridge took it as a courtesy, considering she once attempted to call a blood hunt on Weiss. Wow, holy shit. Why? I've heard five different versions of the story, but all of them seem plausible. Catherine's relationship with this city is... odd, to say the least. But hush for now. He's obviously trying to kill the conversation. But the appearance of Thomas Arturo gives him a perfect way out. Thomas! Thomas! Timmy! Mr. Arturo. Ah, Alam's Alas my. Giving up the good work, eh? Of course. Thomas Arturo, an architect by trade. He's a herald, a member of Prince Panhard's inner circle. An eccentric whose thoughts seem to be ten times faster than his words. Good night, Mr. Arturo. Ah, yes, yes. He disappears into the night. Well, that was brief. Maybe I should stand in their way. That might force them to properly acknowledge my existence. You severely underestimate their dedication to ignoring whelps like you. And just in case you're serious, I beg of you, don't. <laughs> I love you, Kadir. I've been meaning to ask you this about... It. I've been meaning to ask you this for a while now, but never had the opportunity. You really hate Arturo's guts, don't you? He carefully measures his diplomatic response. I have... No strong feelings about Thomas Arturo one way or another. Yeah, well, considering you're always listing positives about every local Camarilla representative under the sun, you might as well have called him a cunt. Language, whelp. That is f Sorry, I burped into the mic. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing I should be apologizing for. That is for Arturo. I will share my opinion of about him as soon as I can come up with one that sticks for more than a week. A group of kindred emerges from the art show, rushing towards the street. Only a noble-looking woman stops next to us. She's wearing a hijab, but curiously enough doesn't hide her hair beneath it. Primogen? If you were rude enough to stare, you'd quickly notice the cloth serves mostly to cover up her horrifying scars. Kadir? Oh, and young Julia. I'm doing my best not to stare. Because Samira is one of the few NYC Camarilla figures who hasn't been an asshole to me. Who hasn't been an asshole to me yet. Samira. Oh god. No! McAfee, I don't care. I just want to play the game. Still here? Did the pl prince require the clan of the hunt's council in some matter? What's the clan of the hunt? Is it Gangrel? That sounds very. Oh, Badu Akeem! Yeah, the Badu Akeem! Hell yeah! They're showing up too! Oh, I'm also glad they acknowledged that Asmite was basically a slur everyone called him for a thousand years. Hell yeah! The Butter Akeem, my boys! Yes. I advise her that no matter how hard she tries, she shouldn't expect me to wear a different costume tomorrow night. She's the Butter Hakim Primogen. Just like the Lasambra, their clan was independent from the Camarilla until relatively recently. However, they negotiated a better deal than we did. They have a Primogen for one. Hailing from the Middle East, the Banu Hakim are drawn to the practice of justice. The rules must be upheld, and every transgression punished. They don't have much say in NYC, but the Prince often seeks their judgment. It's just good PR. I trust she was understanding. Those are beautiful clothes. Thank you so much. I'm eager to see the outfit you came up with. And how are you, Julia? Have you seen any lights at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, pretty certain it's a train. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. I trust you're pestering the prince and your superiors to improve your standing. It's, uh, it's a process. Oh, Julia, Julia, you won't achieve anything if you don't keep reading for it. Kadir, weren't you supposed to teach her the ropes? I'm trying to, Primogen, but with this child, it's always a process. I can only wish you good luck, then. Good night, Julia. Good night, Kadir. Good night. Have a safe trip. The art hole has to be almost empty by now. Seven whole people have walked out of it. Whew! 
You like her, don't you? Stop with your class clown act, whelp. It only serves to reveal deep insecurities. Wow. That's harsh. It's factual. Or I as harsh as you claim. She did tell us both to call her Samira. But you're still keeping your distance with that primogen shit. Watch your profanity. And don't project your fantasies onto me. I won't give you a les lesson about professional boundaries. But I suspect the way you will eventually learn it will be extremely unpleasant. Am I in a- Oh god, what's the- I don't know who this is. Carter Vanderweyden. Oh, that's a hell of a name. Am I interrupting something, good folks? Even though I'm constantly pestering him, Kadir's composer composure is unshaken. His response comes swift and unfazed. Not at all, Mr. Vanderweyden. Heading back to your office? You know me, my dear Sheriff. Where else would I go? Now that's curious. Even though Carter Vanderweyden is a primogen as well, Malkavian, to be precise, I don't hear Kadir address him as such. Yeah, we did meet most of the primogen last game. Uh, granted, we could have met Ashling if I had pursued a uh, Tremere companion in my coterie, but I didn't. I, if I'd known that game was so short, I would have tried to recruit more people into the coterie. Hope to see you tomorrow night. Oh, I will absolutely show up, provided I can. But just in case, I already apologized for not making it to the prince. Simply drowning in work these days. The rhythms, tempo, and intonations of his voice are so familiar. Half of it sounds like JFK. The other half, exactly like Barack Obama. Okay, I know what voice I'm giving him now. Fuck it. Just like his appearance, it all feels so fake. He's old money, of course. Comes from a long line of Dutch merchants who originally settled in the New York region. Runs a wildly successful law office. Rubs elbows with elites of both kindred and kind varieties alike. He seems perfect in every way. And that's why he's so unnerving. He's a child of Mount Cav and must be blighted with some affliction. But whatever it is, he doesn't let it show. I'm not to wonder what he's hiding. The celebrations are planned to last all week. Surely you'll find the time. I pray I will, my good man. I pray I will. In case you need to reach me, you know where to find me. Have a good one. God, I hate how much that fits his dumb fucking face. <laughs> I hate these- I hate video games! He doesn't even register my presence before leaving. Sometimes I think they're all still hoping I'll simply go away. As Carter drives away in his limousine, Kadir shakes his head. You wanted to hear about a witch member of New York City's Camarilla I disliked the most? Yes? He shoots me a knowing glance and smirks. Too bad. They're all my dear colleagues, and I deeply respect every single one of them. Sure you do. Wouldn't want to blurt out something that could lock you out of Mr. Vanderweyden's legal services, would you, you ass kisser? I do expect to find myself in need of a good defense attorney when my broke, incompetent, and foul-mouthed assistant finally pushes me over the edge. Rude. Do you still need me here? I still need to swing by St. Patrick's tonight. Don't worry, we're almost done. The prince is coming out. Oh, good for her! The captain is the last person to leave the ship, huh? And there she is. Helena Panhard, the big kahuna as someone I once knew would call her, the de facto ruler of New York City, and a self-professed patron of the arts. Kadir, penny for your thoughts? That's what she sounded like, right? No, she was much more harsher. Kadir, a penny for your thoughts? Much more harsher? I'm good at words. You should be pleased to hear the High Regent is resigned to her fate, my prince. Mr. Vanderweyden is decidedly not. I suspect he will be too busy to join the festivities all the week through. Excellent. She turns to me. Miss Sarinsky, weren't you supposed to accompany our good sheriff in his duties tonight? There was an unexpected change of plans. Catherine Weiss is back in the city. Catherine Weiss is here. Now that's a welcome surprise. But what does it have to do with you, Miss Sarinsky? She said she didn't want to trouble you with all the paperwork regarding her arrival, Prince Panhard. It's all been taken care of. Kadir has already been informed of everything. 
That's certainly a nice gesture, but... Wait a minute now, where exactly did you meet her? In a fast food restaurant, my prince. I see. Helena rubs her eyes. I don't know if the uh sound's supposed to go at the end, but that's how it's spelled. I think it sounds cool. Catherine and a love for proletarian amusement. I suppose it will be a source of amusing anecdotes this week. If we want to avoid these situations in the future, it might be a good time to discuss, uh, discuss offering Miss Sawinski an office of her own. We'll get to it, eventually. There are more pressing matters at hand. The festivities start tomorrow, and there's still so much to be done. Will you make sure the art hall is secure before leaving? Certainly, my prince. Have a good night. Good night, dear. Good night, Miss Sawinski. We'll talk about your work very soon, don't worry. Of course. Good night, Prince Panhard. A chauffeur escorts her to a limo. There's... That wasn't a limo, that was a fucking SUV, wasn't it? Oh. Okay, god, that, so... <laughs> that was just crazy good timing, I guess. There's an awkward silence between me and Kadir until the car disappears around the corner. More pressing matters, huh? Penny for your thoughts, Kadir? I'm... Certain an image of a keeper of the Elysium stuck in a fast food restaurant will linger in Prince Panhard's mind. You're far closer to your goal than you were a few minutes ago. I'm pretty sure I've heard you say something to that effect a few times now. And I stand by my words. Rome wasn't built in a day, Julia. As a Camarilla loyalist, don't you think it shucks that the ivory tower is so hell-bent on showing disrespect to my clan? They're actually willing to make fools of themselves in the process? We've all had to endure our own hazing rituals. But, yes, the current situation is not ideal. Whatever. You need a hand closing up the Elysium? I'll manage. It's getting late. Better run. Some shadow in Chicago is probably impatient to get a copy of the report you've given me. You've pleased one master, now it's time to please the other. Yeah, here's the thing about working for two masters. Neither of them really thinks of you as their own. Not knowing how to reply, Kadir shrugs. I wave to him goodbye and head for the subway. When I re reach St. Patrick's Cathedral, I'm greeted by a voice that grates on me like teeth on tinfoil. Benoit! Oh, Benoit! God, you've let yourself go, Benoit. He had a German accent, right? Because I can't do a French accent, so I gave him German. Very, very, very. The prodigal daughter returns. Oh my god, no. This is the one thing I didn't want to happen. Julia, please. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, thy God, in vain. Uh-huh. Where's Father Leonard? His clergy duties kept him from getting here on time. He sent me to apologize in his name and keep you company for a few minutes. That's the second thing he ought to apologize for. He just wants his flock to live in unity. I'm more than willing to oblige him. Why won't you? For the last time, I'm not a part of his flock. We have a purely professional arrangement. I know you see it, Sethfei. The Knight Clan's tendency to stick close to the Catholic Church is their greatest virtue. But they still consider this relationship purely instrumental. I, God, I wish I could, we could have learned more about uh, Benoit in Coteries of New York. I haven't played Coteries since I played it for the channel. I should do a second run through. Because Benoit seemed very interesting. He's, spoiler alert by the way, is he Sophie Langley's like actual child? Uh, but yeah, I should, I, I might want to return to that by the way. This is why you need kindred like you to bring the spiritual changes to your clan. To make some understand God's precious gifts. The way, the closer they'd get to the light, the greater their shadows would become. Again, with this insufferable sermonizing. Manoa Segal here is a local nut shop and an ex artist. A degenerate who have some. Oops, sorry. A degenerate who had some sort of complete mental breakdown in the 90s. To recover, he took to religion for solace and guidance. At first, he proclaimed his readiness to devote the rest of his unlife to studying Nazism. A few years later, though, he changed his mind and joined the Catholic Church instead. 
<coughs> Sorry. As luck would have it, his neophyte zeal found a major target in me. When I first met him, I was stupid enough to tell him I was raised Catholic and still identified as such. Somewhat. <coughs> Sorry, the water went down real bad. He immediately pictured me as some sort of a force for change within the Camarilla, and set out to put me back on the righteous path. Now he won't stop preaching to me, apparently, until I become a nun. Remember, the darkest place is directly beneath the candor. You turn cloaks have this unfortunate predisposition to find salvation right within your grasp, and then lose your way within the shadows. Christ, once he starts, he just won't stop. I guess it's time to bring out the big guns. Fucking caps from between the eyes! By the way, I was meaning to ask. Got any news about Sophie Langley? A painful grimace crosses his face, but doesn't linger. Kinds of rude to change the subject, you know. Rude? I'm just looking for a topic both sides of this conversation would care about. You know, like any guide on etiquette says you should. Salvation is a topic close to anyone's heart. As I admit it or not. And it's pretty bold of you to assume I still care about Langley. I do not assume. I'm certain you do. The second she retires from the public eye, you stopped acting like Jesus Eric Conway and start acting like Jesus' King Eric Conway. Coincidence? I've never had a Jesus era. Do people really call it that? Here's how it's gonna work. Tell me what you know, and I'll tell you what they say. Keep in mind, I didn't know she was your sire until a few nights ago. Hell, I haven't even met her. He winces a bit at me saying hell, but lets it go. Sure, I figured you would have prodded that one long ago if you knew. But what do you care anyway? Better to let you drone on about your tormented past and let you carry on with your good missionary shtick. Oh, so this absolutely takes place after the first game ended. Professional cur curiosity. Once a journalist, always a journalist. He scratches his head, and exhales at a sad mockery of a chuckle. Fine then, I'll do my best to make it short. Just like you said, Sophie Langley, every New York kindred's beloved socialite, was my sire. We met some time at the World War II. Okay, you know what? I hate to stop it here, but I'm tired. My vocal, my voice is starting to get all tangly and fucked up, so... I'm going to end this episode here on a cliffhanger. Let us learn more about our previous sire, Sophie Langley. Uh, until then, drink water, love women, trans rights. Hell yeah. <laughs>